Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be diving into the Foley Fusion event going on and whether it is worth it or realistic for you to go for it or not, and if you should or not. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so we're going to dive into this and have a little discussion about the Foley Fusion. It is, you know, if, if you're new and you're wondering how to access this, you just click the portal and then you, over here on the right, you click Fusion. And then we'll see uh, Relic Keeper and Foley. And and a, a popular question I see come up is people asking like, oh my, oh my gosh, is Relic Keeper going to like go away? Relic Keeper is a permanent fusion. So if you're kind of slowly progressing and working towards him, that's okay. You don't have to worry about him vanishing if a, if a new fusion is introduced. You'll be fine. Take your time and go for your Relic Keeper. Uh, Foley is the is kind of the event fusion going on, and there's and there's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot of champions required to make this happen, and as we can see, it's over three weeks. Basically, uh, 22 days is what you're gonna have to get Foley. Um, you know, it's very very hard to estimate how uh, how long it will take like a free to play player to do this. I sat down with like a pen and a pad and I was really going through, you know, how much energy I kind of estimated, okay, this will take this much, this will take this much, and I kind of worked my way up the whole ladder and estimated, okay, this is how much energy I think it would take like the average player with average RNG to get to a point where they can fuse fully. And then I averaged in the average amount of energy that you can expect to get. If you're playing the game efficiently, you know, staying below your max where you're generating energy 24 hours a day and all that. Then I divided it by, um, you know, all of those numbers to get it down to how long it would take. And I came up with 18.7 days. So, um, you know, pretty close to the three weeks. You get 22 days and, and I'm thinking it would take about 18 to 19 days if you played really efficiently and really actively, um, you know, without like spending gems. Um and again, I could be wrong on that, it, you know, maybe, um, you know, so I would say it's realistic to go for it. Um, but if you're not in the end game, if you're not able to farm XP in Brutal, if you're not able to clear kind of the higher stages of dungeons, then obviously that number is going to change a lot and it's going to be really tough for you to get to a point where you're able to fuse fully. But I would go for it, you know, if you, if you fall short and you only get the four epics or something, you know, so be it, you know, don't, don't kill yourself trying to, to get it done. But given the math that I did today, I would say it's worth going for it because I think it's realistic to do it. If, if you're able to farm at decent levels and be active and play efficiently, um, you know, if not, just go for the four epics or, or go and get what you can, even if you're a brand new player, even if, you know, you might as well get as much as you can. Try to get the epic champions if you can. And, and you always want to strive to get as far in events as you can. So, uh, you know, none of these none of these characters at the bottom here, like even the rares, are life-changing. So, like, I wouldn't feel bad about sac. You know, down here there's nothing like an Apothecary or a Kale or a Bellower or a Cold Heart. Like, there's nothing down here that I would feel like super, you know... Um, hesitant to lose so don't worry about fusing up to get these epics I, I I would go for it and get as far as you can now some of you wanted me to review these four epics to see how good they are and uh, and kind of if they're worth sacrificing into Foley so I'll do that now we'll start with um, towering Titan and I'll kind of do a, a live review here and go over him uh, an a1 with a 40% chance of placing a 60% decrease defense debuff for two turns that is a really good A1. Very useful, so I like that. Um, an A2 that attacks four times with a 50% chance of placing a Provoke. Provoke doesn't work on like bosses and stuff, so this is mainly like an arena ability. But it is a four hitter. Four hitters uh, are good, and you can get that on a three turn cooldown. So again, not amazing, but a decent ability. The A3 is going to be a 60% increased defense buff on all allies for two turns. And a 15% continuous heal on this champion for two turns, as well as a shield buff on this champion equal to 30% of their max HP for two turns. Okay, so this is a little bit too solo of an ability. Like, this isn't affecting your whole team. The only thing that affects your whole team is the defense buff. So, again, a good ability, but not, like, 
you know, super or anything. The passive, this is only when you have Cage Breaker on the same team, but it will basically split damage with Cage Breaker. And then the aura is kind of average. It's 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 decent. Um, so Towering Titan, I would say, is okay. I, I wouldn't say he's a great uh, uh, you know meta champ, and I, and I wouldn't say he's trash. So that would be kind of my review. He's just kind of there. He's just kind of an average epic. And then for this one here, Tashada. We got an A1 that places a 50% increased attack buff on this champion for two turns if critical. I think this is a pretty bad A1 on her. I think normally this would be a good A1. Like if it were, you know, Aethel or, or Kale or something. But uh, Tashada's base attack is so low that, okay, you know, getting a 50% increase to her attack base stat is, is kind of meh. And then our A2 attack three times at random each hit with a 50% chance of placing a weaken. I do like that because that's basically a 100% chance you're attacking three times and each hit has a 50% chance and you can buff that up. Uh, so so that's a decent, it's the small version of a weaken, so it, it's a decent ability, not incredible. And then our A3 is attack once, revive a random ally with 40% HP if this target, if, if this attack kills the target. Um, and then she can only use this ability if an ally is dead. Again, this is really hard to get consistent value out of. That's extremely situational. So I would say Tashada is, is not that great. Just at my first look, I think she's kind of a, a below average epic. And then let's go over Missionary. We got an A1 that with a 20% chance of placing a stun. An A2 that attacks once with a 40% chance of placing a Provoke. Has a 100% chance of placing Provoke for one turn if this champion's HP is higher, which it should be consistent, so that's good. Attack once with a 75% chance of placing a 100% heal reduction. That's a good ability. And um, also has 75% chance of placing a 30% decrease speed. Okay. And you can get this to a three turn cooldown and really buff the chance up. So Missionary would be really good against the uh, Spirit boss. Obviously, he's Force Affinity, so he's he's not going to be as accurate and doing as well. But in that situation, you would just be hoping for the heal reduction. So he's very viable in the Spirit Keep. And uh, he'd be great in the arena for going against somebody like a Rhine Beast or something to decrease the speed and do some heal reduction and stuff. So Missionary is, uh, you know, got some situational use. And then uh, his 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 aura is, is okay. It's, it's not amazing, but it's okay. Um, so, yeah, he's got a little bit of utility here. I, I would say he's a decent epic. Uh, not Definitely not great or anything, in my opinion. And then let's go over Kytus. I think I'm going to have to do this one the old school way because he's one that I actually have. So let's go over into the Knight Revenant and go over Kytus. An A1 with an 85% chance of placing a 100% heal reduction. Debuff for two turns if the target has a continuous heal buff. So that's uh, it's an A1 and it's it's very situational. Um, place a 50% increase attack buff on this champion. And see, he actually has a good base attack. So that's not bad. Um, then attack four times at random. The attacks will be critical if the target has it. So he's really geared towards countering continuous heal. You know, things like uh, you know, Rhine Beast in the arena and stuff. Rain Beast. You guys always yell at me for saying Rhine Beast. It's because I, I come from Overwatch and one of the main tanks is Reinhardt. So I'm so used to saying Reinhardt. And then when I see Rhine Beast, it just comes out Rhine Beast. But it is technically Rain Beast because he's like a reindeer. You guys always yell at me for that. Sorry, it's a habit I can't break. Um, an A3 is attack all enemies two times. Damage increases according to the amount of HP this champion has lost. This is a secret skill and only becomes available when this champion has lost 50% of their HP. So, he is a hero you would want to kind of... You'd almost want to get him to lose half his HP. And then that's a really great ability. Um, the, the aura is pretty mess. So again, Kytus, I mean, he's, he's decent in the mid game and he, he's, he's, he's good situationally, but again, I'd have to say he's like an average Epic. I wouldn't say he's, he's, he's great or anything. Um, so going back into our fusion tab, now that we've kind of gone over the Epics you're trying to acquire, 
Um, I, I wouldn't say any of these are like great. Like I wouldn't be losing any sleep over spending them on a fusion. Like none of these epics are super meta or, or game changing in my opinion. I mean, you know, most of them are decent, but, but not amazing. Um, now let's go over Foley and, and I'll kind of discuss if he's worth it or not. And, uh, and all that he's magic affinity, which I hate so many champions are magic. I wish Foley was spirit or something. If he was going to be a fusion, because uh, for most players out there, magic is their strongest affinity. So that really puts a damper on on the value of it, that he's magic. I, I wish he was a different affinity, but um, let's go over it here. A1 is attack one enemy four times with a 20% chance of placing a 60% decreased defense debuff for two turns. That's an awesome A1. We can get this to 25% and we attack four times, so we're going to get extremely consistent value out of his A1. And it's a four hitter, which is awesome. A2 is attacked four times at random each hit with a 35% chance of placing a leech. So he's basically going to be, uh, you know, get this to a three turn cooldown. We're going to be able to keep leech up extremely often. It's going to provide, uh, you know, life steal for the whole team when they hit that. It's another four hitter. So again, an awesome ability there. I do like that. That's consistent value. A3 is attack all enemies. Enemies under two or more debuffs that are killed by this attack cannot be revived. So. Um, he's, he's going to work well with debuffing teams. Um, you know, obviously you're not going to get any value in boss fights, you know, like at the, the last stage of like a dungeon or a clan boss, but something like this is going to be amazing for the ice golem and can be really good in the arena. If you're willing to kind of micro it and do it right. We got a, an ability here, living armor that is unlocked at Ascension three heals a champion by 20% of max HP and boosts the turn meter by 50% whenever an enemy places a stun, freeze, sleep, or provoke on this champion and then immediately removes all those buffs on a three turn cooldown. So, uh, yeah, that's good. I, I like that ability. That's something cool. Um, and, and it's just kind of like a, it looks like it's just like a passive proc. Uh, so I, I do like that. It's a, something cool to unlock at Ascension 3. So Foley, I think, is very good. Uh, he's going to be good in dungeons. He's going to be great versus the Fire Knight, great versus the Ice Golem. He's going to help you with grinding out some gear. He's going to be pretty decent in the arena, definitely usable in, in if you build the right team around him. He is going to be amazing against the clan boss when you get Giant Slayer. Uh, so yeah, he's a very good hero to have in your arsenal. The only downside is that he's magic affinity but um again i think he's worth trying to go for is he is he the best legendary in the game is he ridiculously game breaking no he's not but he is a very good champion and he's definitely the best champion on this page and and i think he's definitely a legendary worth having so um, yeah, I hope that kind of clears up some of this and, and kind of sheds a light on and, and oh and by the way I didn't mention all of the stuff down here all of these all of these required fusions are going to be acquirable in Like dungeons that you can farm or uh, by completing events. There'll be rewards So, uh, you know, these are all uh, you know, very realistically gettable and the event is, is Realistic to get done if you are able to play efficiently and be very active and, uh, you know, if you've been playing for a little bit, I mean, if you're a brand new player, obviously it's going to be really hard to get to Foley. Um, you know, it would, it would definitely take some, some financial investment, but if you're towards the end game, I think it's realistic and I think it's worth it if you're able to do it. So I would say to go for it. And if you don't, and if you don't get it done, if you just end up with the epics or whatever, you know, it is what it is, but I think it's worth going for it because I do think Foley is worth it. So yeah, I hope that kind of sheds some light. If you have any questions, definitely drop it down in the comments and, and I'll do my best to help you out. As always, have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Peace.